will see Jesus Christ high and exalted in our service today. If you'll look at your bulletin, there's a lot of things going on in the bulletin. Uh, on the week at a glance, you can see all the activities that are going on there. The small groups that are going on at 10 o'clock. Uh, if you haven't joined one of those or you haven't tried one of those, I would encourage you to do that. There's a list of them in the bulletin as well. Uh, one new thing that we're, we're doing right now, and there's a big flyer in your uh, bulletin, Snacks for Teachers. And I'll explain that a little bit to you. What we're doing is we're going to ask you to help us collect snacks. And what we're going to be doing with those is we're going to make teacher appreciation baskets for the teachers at Hemby Bridge Elementary, Piedmont Middle, and Piedmont High School, and our preschool. So that would be a big basket of snacks that will be available for the staff. So we ask that you contribute things that ask your teacher what their favorite candy or their snack is and bring that in. We are also collecting snacks for Hemby Bridge Elementary for the students at their snack time. Sometimes their, their lunch is so early in the morning, they need to have a snack time for the children in the afternoon, and sometimes parents don't send snacks with them, so it's up to the teachers to provide those. So we're going to, to send some bulk snacks with them as well. So there's a collection box out in the lobby. It's just to the left of the entrance doors right here. So bring those in, and uh, we'll compile those, and we'll distribute those. We're planning on distributing them to the schools um, after the holiday after Labor Day. There's so much going on with back-to-school things. Um, so when that all runs out of gas, we're going to give them another special little treat. So if you will uh, take time to do that, that would be fantastic. You can also donate uh, money to Wanda Green. She'll be happy to accept that. If you don't want to buy snacks or you're not sure what to buy, she would be happy to do that for us. So we thank her for that. We thank you all for the donations that will be coming in soon. Uh, I would like to introduce to you some people that maybe you don't know, but they have, they have a passion for a ministry here at the church that goes on here at the church. And I would like them to tell you about it and then possibly see if there's not ways that you could help them out. I'm going to ask uh, if Dan and Dawn Sunblade, if uh, you would come up or down. and share with us about your, your passion and the ministry that you have. Good morning. Can you hear me? I'm not very good with this. Okay. Okay. Um, as for those that don't know us, we're Dan and Don Sunblade. We've been members here about three years, two and a half, close to three. Um, and we were asked about, we were here about a year when our, uh, Hugo, Pastor Hugo, some of you remember him, asked us to um, take over the ministry of the shelter meal. So the Monroe Community Shelter um, provides um, three meals a day, 365 days a, uh, a year. Um, and they also do, they have a, a senior ministry where they deliver food and they have a pantry a couple times a month. So they are a big part of Union County to help provide people with um, food. So on the second Wednesday of every month, our church um, ha has been um, providing a meal. We've been doing it for a year and a half now. It'll be two years in January. So every that, that second Wednesday, we provide um, a protein, uh, vegetable, starch, uh, bread, and then um, a dessert, and then drinks. There's Capri Suns and um, water. So we've been providing that every, once a month for the last year and a half. And we prepare the food. So, um, and I get some help from some of the members. <laughs> he helped me this, this, this month with the 130 pieces of chicken. So, yeah. Um, he does help. We do it together. So, yeah. I do most of the preparing. Um, I take the Wednesday off. Of my work has been very gracious and lets me take, um, um, take that Wednesday off. And actually, my office is going to volunteer and help, pr help provide some of the stuff and work next month. So I'm getting more people um, to come. And I have somebody from the cafeteria that's been helping, trying to get her to come to church. Well, I'm keeping that one. Stay out of it. Um, so just wanted to let you all know that's what we do here. And I know I don't know if everybody knew about it or not. And if you want to help, I, I need desserts every month. So you can always drop some desserts off and leave them in the kitchen and label it. Um, pretty easy. And I'm here Wednesday, that second Wednesday at 12, trying to prepare, starting to prepare stuff. So. Charlie and Susie 
they've been helping. Ed and Margaret. There's yeah. Jeannie's been providing me with some snacks for the. Uh, and how how many people do you feed? Oh yes, each, I'm sorry. So week? yeah, so there's anywhere from um, the average right now is probably between 70 and 90. When I first started, we were doing like 50 to 70. Uh, last month we fed 125. Wow. Yeah, that was a big day. Um, we ran out of food that, that day. They had some sandwiches for backup and stuff, but they usually tell us how many they're averaging, and they're averaging about 100 now, anywhere between 80 and 100. So, yeah, 88 came, so 80, 90, um, and it's fa you know it's and it's for the community. It's open to the community, so it's not just the people at the shelter that are staying there, not just the residents. It's for anybody that is in the community that needs a meal. That I use that's open from six to seven at night for the. We do the dinner, but there's a breakfast and a lunch. Anybody can, is welcome to come have a meal. So if you know of somebody that is in need of that, make sure they're aware of that because it's free. There's no charge or anything. So. Okay. To do that much work for so long. You can tell that that's a passion of theirs. So I would say to you, if there's a way that you feel you could help, uh, one of the things that they really need help with is cleanup. Because after they cook, they have to get the food to the shelter, and it still has to be a certain degree temperature, or they can't serve it. So if they have to wait and clean up after they cook before they leave, that takes some of their time. So if you even come to the, the kitchen and work out, we even have a dishwasher. So you know, if you can, there you go, yeah. So if you can help in any way, you can see Dan or Dawn, and uh, they can tell you how best uh, that you can help with them. So now if you'll give your attention to Penny, you'll hear the prayer requests for today. Please make a note of at least one of them that you would be willing to pray for throughout this entire week. Now you may not be able to pray for all of them, but pick one that touches your heart and remember to pray for them this week. Good morning. Please be in prayer for Willis Torres. Uh, Ginger B Golden broke her foot, so please, please pray that it heals well. The Snyder family, as they mourn the loss of their mother, Alzino. Roger Hinson's son's friend needs prayer. Kamen had his heart surgery on Monday and is doing well, but please pray for continued healing. Also play pray for Annie during chemo. Lewis Johnson has throat cancer and John Johnson has throat problems. They are twin brothers. Um, Ashley Troutman, the daughter of Teresa and Jeff Warlick, is in labor right now at 35 and a half weeks. So please pray for her and the baby. Um, and pray for Diane Petrowski to feel better. Uh, do we have any other prayers or prayer requests? Praises or prayer requests? Okay. Congratulations. Colton, congrats. Anyone else? Oh, hi. <laughs> no. <laughs> Bob, Bob Petrowski's CT scan showed nothing was wrong. Anything else? Yes.
course there is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Ted Griffin. Okay. And what was the second name? Kelvin Hayes. Okay. Okay. Yes. I saw a hand here. <laughs> okay. Her best friend's family, your best friend passed away a few years ago on today's date, correct? Okay. Yes. He's in hospice. Okay. Jose. Okay. Okay. Yes. Annie is not doing well. Um, she went home, and her mom is feeding her through a feeding tube, correct? But she's not doing well and needs a lot of extra prayers. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Well, friends, let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer this morning. Uh, we usually move right into our music, but I think this morning we need to petition Almighty God, the creator and sustainer of our faith. And God, we come to you this morning because you are almighty. You are all powerful. So God, we come, we bring our requests to you. God, there seems to be so much evil being perpetrated in this world. It's overwhelming at times. God, we ask that you would move by the power of your Holy Spirit in all these requests that were made today. Father God, and we ask that you would receive glory to the way that you work through them. Give us the grace to accept your answers. Give us the words to praise your name. Give us the gift of joy that we might rejoice regardless of our circumstances. Empower us by your Holy Spirit to move through this life one day at a time. Sometimes in our earthly bodies, that's all we can do. And God, I pray that during this time, that you would open our hearts and our minds, that we might learn of you, and that as we do, that our hearts would be filled filled with joy and words of praise to Almighty God. Amen. Let's stand, if you will. Let's sing those praises to him this morning. This song is called Let the Praises Ring. I think you all know it. So join us, if you will. Y'all ready back here? All right, here we go. Oh, Lord, my God. In you I put my trust. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my hope. I'll sing that loud, church. Here we go. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my trust. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my hope.
your ring, folks. Come on. Let your heart be joyful. Here we go. Oh, Lord, I now to you I give my hands. Oh, Lord, my God, to you I give my feet. Oh, yes. oh Lord, my God, to you I give my everything. Please join us in To God Be the Glory, and also His Name is Wonderful.
sing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
stand and join us for one more song. <laughs> it's all about music today. You just heard Sweet Hour of Prayer. This is going to be Sweet Hour of Prayer. This is going to be a time of praise. Peace. So, so man's going to sing, and we're going to echo and sing back what she sang. So y'all sing with me, and here we go. be seated. Yeah. 
Let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father God, as we come before you this morning, God, we offer our lives as living sacrifices. You've called us to be holy because you are holy. You've called us to share the love of Christ with those that we come in contact with. So God, we come today to learn of you, to learn more of you, to draw closer to you. God, we want to be doers of your word, not just hearers. We want to be bold in our witness, not just chair sitters. But it's easy to be here in church where we're surrounded by our brothers and sisters in Christ. God, we ask that you would empower us by your Holy Spirit to have the same boldness when we go out into the world where it can be dark and lonely and filled with trials. So open our minds and our hearts this morning as we explore your word. Help us to learn by the power of your Holy Spirit that we might look more like Jesus when we leave today and when we came in this place today. God, we are thankful for all your blessings and give you all praise and all glory. Amen and amen. Oh, wow, what a great morning. Amen. Great morning of music and, and I love the, the, the talent that is, that is here that is being used for God's honor and glory. And I don't know if you noticed it this morning, but the average age of the choir was brought down by about, <laughs> I don't know, maybe 10 years today. <laughs> so uh, Harrison, we thank you for joining us in the choir. That was great to have, to have a young man up here. Yeah. And of course, we thank everyone who contributes to, the, to our ministries on a, on a weekly basis and our tech people. And we are so thankful for all that we have here. So this morning... 
we are going to continue in our series, Words of Comfort in an Uncomfortable World. Now, we've, we've introduced this uh, by, by the premise that our world is becoming more and more uncomfortable for and toward Christians at a very alarming rate. Evil is perpetrated in places and in ways that we haven't seen before. And there is such hostility towards Christians and Jews alike. And it's senseless and at a preposterous level, unthinkable. It doesn't even make sense to me. You know, I have a saying that I adopted years ago that common sense is not a flower that grows in everyone's garden. <laughs> That's panning out more and more these days. I think. Well, and, and one night last week we had the TV on and there were three stories on the news. Three stories in a row talking about someone that was shot and killed in Charlotte. Three in a row. And in our uncomfortable world, we can find comfort or we have to find comfort in God and through his word. And I'm not going to jump down a rabbit hole or um, anything this morning and just elaborate on the lies and the evil and the deceptions and, that are prevalent in, us, in our society. Let's just rejoice that this is not our home, Amen. that we're just passing through. Amen. Amen. Well, we've already explored the comfort of knowing God by knowing that God is good. And then we talked about God being sufficient. And today is another important one for us as Christians. Our words of comfort today are God gives us peace. Now, when we hear that word peace, it can mean a lot of different things to different people. Kevin, will you roll that video clip real quick? What is the one most important thing our society needs? I would have to say world peace. Definitely world peace. That's easy. World peace. World peace. And world peace. Uh. That's a parody that uh, has been around for a while, pl plaguing beauty pageants everywhere. But, uh, you know, if, if we look at that, you know, on, on a world level, we talk about peace meaning different things. Peace can mean the absence of war or international conflict. On a, on a national level, peace can mean the absence of maybe civil violence or unrest. At a local level, maybe peace means safety for the residents of, of a city or a particular area. And on a personal level, we all just want some peace and quiet. Right? Time, time that's geared towards ourselves and our likes without any interruptions or disturbances. There's turmoil in both public and personally, and it truly marks or is a mark of a fallen and sinful world. And the concept, this concept of peace is broader than international societal harmony. And we, we desperately want peace in our own personal lives. Like we said, we all desire relief from the relentless pressures and problems of our daily lives. You know, there's even a, even a language, kind of a lingo about peace that infiltrates our conversations, right? We, we seek peace peace and quiet as we mentioned and then we want that time to be refreshed from the cares of everyday life we talk about making peace with your past in forgiveness and we expect law enforcement to keep the peace and even when our earthly life ends the concept of resting in peace has become almost synonymous with death or dying and sadly most people pursue peace their entire lives. And yet we truly have no idea how true peace is found. As Christians, 
we should be aware that peace can't be found in temporal things, in societal change, in economic stability, or even in recreational experiences. Now, recreational experiences help relieve stress, don't they? And kudos to those of you who have been attending our Tuesday evening exercise class. You've been getting some good stress relief. Amen. Uh, if you haven't tried it, come on out Tuesday night. We'd love to have you. But we're talking here about biblical peace, real peace. And real peace doesn't depend on the circumstances of life. God's word authoritatively points us to a relationship that produces lasting peace. Now we're going to look at uh, John chapter 14 this morning. I hope you brought your Bibles. Um, so if you want to go ahead and turn there a while. In John 14, Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure, for his crucifixion and death. And he emphasizes to them his continual care for them and his concern for their comfort as well. Even in the face of his imminent suffering and his death, he expresses his profound love for his disciples and causes him to give them tangible and reliable reasons for them to maintain hope. Now, friends, Christ's message of comfort and hope is as applicable to us today as it was there in the upper room. This world of ours that is so full of turmoil and false hope needs to hear Christ's message of hope, his presence and his peace are for today. Friends, Jesus never fails. He will perfectly fulfill every one of his promises. And Jesus promised his disciples to send the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth that will abide with them and teach them and empower them and in the disciples' moment of distress, just hours before the cross, Jesus points his disciples to the ultimate and the only source of hope, the triune God. And it is in this hope that we can find peace. John 14, 27, Jesus tells his disciples this. If you look at your Bibles, this is John 14, verse 27, just one, one verse. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Mm. Now, both the Old and the New Testaments underscore the divine source and the divine character of peace. This is a, a very familiar and very important theological term that's used in the Old Testament is that word for peace, the word shalom. Shalom. And this word is, is sometimes used as a greeting. And it can refer to the absence of strife between people and nations and between God and man. And it can also be used to represent the future messianic kingdom to come. But shalom is more than that. It carries a representation of personal peace. And not just from the negative aspect of the absence of trouble and conflict, but more importantly, from the positive perspective, referring to the presence of completeness and wholeness, contentment, welfare, health, prosperity, harmony, and fulfillment. Real peace, a peace that surpasses human comprehension, is a blessing that flows from a right relationship with God. So let's take a look at the peace that God gives to us. I want to start with the, the nature of God's peace. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. 
Peace with God is the bedrock on which any and all other peace that we seek is built. I mean, since the rebellion of Adam and Eve, the human race has been at war with God. From birth, we all oppose God. Basically, humanity hates God. And all who are a part of this world's system cannot be at peace with God. We were not at peace with God at one point. But the good news, however, is that enemies of God can be reconciled to God through faith in Jesus Christ. Through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, God's holiness was satisfied for humanity's sin. And because God is holy and just, righteousness and peace are inseparable. Now let me say that again. Righteousness and peace are inseparable. Because through Christ, we now have peace with God, our righteousness. Now we can have the peace of God. And it is his peace that surpasses all human insight and the peace of God can protect us from anxieties from doubt from fear and distress Are you picking up the, the truth that I'm that I'm laying down here right. you can't have peace without righteousness Jesus provided a way for us to be righteous and that put us at peace with God and only after you are at peace with God, can you have the peace of God in your life? Amen. Amen. My peace I give you, Jesus said to his disciples. It's divine and it's unfathomable. This means that it's, it's not bound by our human logic or our circumstances. It's a peace that exists regardless of of what is happening around us. It's not a peace that can be, can be manufactured or achieved through human effort. It is rather a supernatural gift from God that surpasses our ability to truly understand it. Jesus says, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Jesus makes a very clear distinction here between the peace that he offers and the peace that the world gives. The Bible repeatedly emphasizes that the world's peace is inadequate. In Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, they say, there is no peace for the wicked. In Luke, Romans, and 1 Thessalonians, the Bible says that unbelievers will talk of peace and safety and there will be none. A subjective peace that is based on a temporary positive or positive circumstances or even the ignorance of escapism is not genuine peace at all. Now escapism is the habitual diversion of the mind to purely imaginative activity or entertainment as an escape from reality. You're just pretending that this stuff doesn't exist, basically. So friends, the world's peace is temporary. It's contingent on external factors, things or circumstances, success of our careers, the stability of our relationships, or the comfort of our surroundings. However, these sources of peace are fragile and subject to change, and they're, they're fleeting. In contrast, the peace of God is steadfast and eternal. It is rooted in God's unchanging nature. How many know God doesn't change? Amen. Amen. You root something in an unchanging nature, it ain't changing can't say this enough today. Only those who know Jesus Christ can have peace with God and subsequently experience true peace in this life. Amen. And 
then Jesus goes on and he repeats the command that opens chapter 14. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Now, this is, this is kind of a, a promise and command type situation where God has promised his peace and then he commands us not to be afraid. Don't let your heart be troubled. And these, these verses will sometimes make us scratch our heads a little bit in question because how can Jesus say, don't worry and don't be afraid when there's so much evil and so many bad things that are happening around us? I mean, the Bible teaches us that as Christians, we have a responsibility to embrace and to use God's promises. The Holy Spirit indwells us. And then the Holy Spirit empowers us. Our responsibility is to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to walk in the Spirit, like it tells us in Ephesians and Galatians. To be filled with the Spirit means to allow the Spirit to have control of you. Put aside your own will and your desires. So as it is in, in a, a lot of cases with God's promises, we have some responsibility in accordance with the promise. An example of that would be Isaiah 40, 31. It says, those who hope or wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Our hope has to be in the Lord. We have to be in a close fellowship with him to reap the benefits of his promise. Does that make sense? When God sent manna to Israel in the desert, that was his gift, his promise that he would provide. But they still had the responsibility of going out and picking it up and gathering it and eating it. There was some responsibility there. Philippians 4, 7 tells us that God's peace will guard our hearts and our minds. God's peace, not, not the world's peace. In times of anxiety and fear, the peace of God acts as a sentinel, as a guard, standing watch over our inner selves. It keeps us secure from the disturbances that threaten our well-being. Our responsibility to experience that protection and promise is to actively surrender our worries and our fears to God, to put our trust in Him alone. We're responsible, friends, to study the scriptures, to be diligent in our Christian walk, and to pursue holiness. If you're not doing those things, you won't find peace. You won't have God's peace active in your life. We're called to seek peace and to pursue peace in 1 Peter. In Psalm 119, it says that when we love God's law, that we will have great peace. It's obedience. Obedience and submissiveness to God. So to experience God's peace, we begin by bringing our anxieties before God in prayer and combining our requests with thanksgiving. Okay, come on, church. Our requests with thanksgiving. There you go. All right. Very good. We have to align ourselves with his will, and invite his peace into our hearts. This is an act of surrender and gratitude that opens the door to the divine peace that guides us. When we trust his goodness, his faithfulness, and his provisions, God fills us with all joy and peace and believing, it says in Romans 15. To live in anguish over our past or anxiety concerning the present or apprehensions about the future is for us to truly fail in embracing and using the peace that God gives us. And I know that's tough. Those are hard words because I, I don't have it down yet either too often affected by circumstances and things going on around us. In Matthew 6, in his Sermon on the Mount, 
Jesus tells us, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor your body as what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? God commanded us not to worry because when we do, our worry is used by Satan to distort and corrode and trivialize the experience of God's divinely given peace. And as we learn to trust in God's promises and his plan for our lives, we are more able to experience his peace. We learn to trust God by learning to believe more fully that he is in control and that he works all things together for our good, even when we can't see the full picture. And that's a tough one too, I know it, church. I'm preaching to me this morning. Most of us have a very significant barrier to experiencing God's peace. And it's our desire to be autonomous or control everything. Amen? When we relinquish our need for control and accept that we're not in charge, we can open ourselves to God's peace. And when we talk about surrender here, make no mistake, this surrender, don't confuse it for passivity. Surrender is a willingness to trust God's wisdom over our own. There's nothing passive about that. And the good news, friends, is the message of the gospel is that Jesus Christ has ended this war between sinners and God through his shed blood. And because he has imputed his righteousness to us, we can now experience the peace of God that become a guiding and controlling principle in each and every one of our lives. And I'll close with these verses from Colossians chapter 3. These verses give us a clear picture of the responsibility of how we are to live and in doing so, experiencing God's peace. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion and kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues... Put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Paul exhorted Christians, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called one body and be thankful and be thankful. Amen. And Father God, we do thank you for the peace, the peace that passes all understanding. God, we thank you for your righteousness, which you gave to us and you empowered us to choose to accept your free gift. So God, these are difficult words to hear today. In the midst of the turmoil, in the midst of the evil that we see, in the midst of the lies and deceptions and everything else going on in the world and a lot of things we're not even aware of, but we know they're not right. God, it's hard to rest in your peace. God, help us to not let our hearts troubled to not be afraid because ultimately we are your child and we have the most powerful big brother in the world 
and regardless of what happens to our body, our spirit will be with you forever. Allow us to live in that peace. And we ask this in the name of your holy son, Jesus. Amen. Amen.